Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa, and I will be the host for today's Q&A. So a little bit about Repicture. Repicture is a mission-driven public benefit organization, and our vision is a world where everybody can thrive in STEM, so that fields that address critical challenges like climate change look more like the people affected by it. We're trying to build new ways for people to explore careers through the world of STEM all around you, and one of the ways that we're doing that is through this interview series called Making STEM Human. This series is dedicated to understanding the journey behind the lives of various STEM professionals. And with that, we have our very first student spotlight. Um, I'd like to introduce Ashley Kim. Ashley is currently a sophomore at UC Berkeley majoring in data science. Her goal is to pair the ubiquitous necessity of data to analyze world events at a think tank or a research group of sorts. She's especially interested in disinformation campaigns, deep fakes, data ethics, and their impacts on democracy. However, global or international studies as a whole has her attention, and she hopes to utilize her learnings to impact the world around her. And with that, let's get started. Uh, so welcome, Ashley. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. So one thing that we explore at Repicture is how people find their career paths. Can you tell us your journey of how you got to where you are today, such as, you know, your early educational journey or and why you chose that the why you chose the field you're currently in? OK, yeah, that's a great start. But personally, for me, it is a very long winded answer. So hopefully that's OK. But yeah, it started in my elementary school days when I really wanted to pair science and math together. I didn't realize it at the time that I wanted that combination, but I was interested in both science and math growing up. But it wasn't until junior year when I was doing this research project that I realized how important statistics is in research. So when I applied to colleges, they were all mainly statistics based. I didn't realize data science was a specific thing. But when I was researching during Cal Day, I realized data science is a, the better embodiment of what I want to do. So from there, I focus more on getting to data science routes. Yeah. Um, in terms of other interests, like AI, that was through Cal Hacks, which is a hackathon um, that Berkeley hosts. Um, that's where I first got into what AI has to offer and stuff like NLP as well, which was really interesting. And in terms of some other subjects like disinformation and deep fakes, stuff like that, that was more recent developments, but it was thanks to my brother, who's also interested in those things, um, that I also started to look towards that. Um, and also just uh, looking at various scholarship essays and um, applications really tried to motivate me to learn more about those things. And also the more global studies part of it was due to my brief, but very fun um, introduction to global studies class I had with the wonderful Darren Zook, who is a professor at Berkeley. Um, even though I had to leave because of the wait list in the end, that really um, showed me so much about what the world is. It's not just this bubble that we're living in. There are so many things that are going on um, in the world, whether it's migration issues or um, just natural resources or whatever it may be. So yeah, those lessons have really made it hard for me to ignore those things now. So yeah, it's just made me really want to focus on that lens too. Yeah, so that was the long-winded answer. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the world is absolutely super fascinating and you just have to try harder to find the fascination in it. Um, so, on, yeah, on to our second question, what has inspired you to sort of actively seek out different networking opportunities and even just opportunities to learn more about, you know, your potential career? Yeah, so the main 
driver, I would say, of trying to network more with, with people is just learning about what I want to do. Initially, that curiosity is what dry, drove me to learn more about the field itself and who I can interact with. So I think through Repicture, there's a specific project that asks you to create a networking list. So that already led me to think about who I want to talk to. Yeah. And it also encouraged me to look at more activities I could participate in in school that are more focused on specific interests that I have developed. So I think it just is a continuing trend that aligns with whatever passion you're developing. Yeah. Yeah, we're all on this journey of trying to figure ourselves out. And I don't know if it get, gets easier, but you get used to it for sure. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, on to our next question. Um, how important do you think it is for students to sort of be open to, you know, various possibilities or opportunities? I know it's a term that's thrown around so often. Yeah, be open, be open to every possibility, which I understand. Um, I think it is very important for people in our age specifically to be open and versatile, but I won't disregard the fact that it's quite hard to, to always be in that mindset. But yes, it's definitely an asset to have. Adaptability is one of the most important things we could have, um, especially in an age that is so technologically advancing and will continue to advance. So it's up to the youth to continue to be up in front of those developments if you can. I think I read in an article in the past that suggested that our age and going on forward, we will easily have several jobs. That will not be uncommon at all. So it's something that we will inevitably have to adapt with. So it's just going to be a core facet of our generation. So it's never going to hurt to be versatile. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I've worked like plenty of different jobs ranging from like research to doing like customer service and like sort of oddball things like running an interview series so it's all very you know relative and in the moment and I think it's nice to just experience life and just have a lot of experiences to like lean back on for sure so I was wondering what are you know some of the challenges that the world faces that you would like to tackle? No pressure though, no pressure. You don't need to fix the problem, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we could all list very many challenges, I bet. Um, but leaning more towards my current interests, I would talk about disinformation campaigns being one of the bigger conflicts that I'm curious about. It might not be the biggest uh, conflict on top of people's minds at the moment, but I think it pairs very heavily with things that happen in the world. Um, this is a very important year in terms of elections, 2024. Um, and as I'm reading the world news, I'm realizing how many of these countries are plagued with disinformation campaigns. The US is by no means an exception. Um, and aspects like deep fakes, as I mentioned earlier, are only fueling the fire. So yeah, trying to, of course, I don't think it will be completely eradicated, but trying to address those issues and create some sort of way to mitigate them if we can is definitely important going forward. Wow, like I've never really thought too much about it, but especially with the rise of you know AI and and similar like deep fake technology, you can very much easily you know fake a political person and you know voice out opinions that aren't necessarily what that person would talk talk about or speak on. So it's it's incredibly awesome that you're interested in this these kind of things because it's so relevant. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Oh, did you have more to say? Oh. It was just something I thought of as you were talking, but yes, um, I guess disinformation and misinformation kind of go hand in hand. 
but the idea of social media also playing a massive factor in spreading those lies and uh, certain biases that people may want to believe or some people in power want them to believe certain things. So yes, that also goes hand in hand with deep fakes and AI. Absolutely. And we, we may have touched on it already, but sort of looking ahead in your future, what are your sort of future goals and aspirations in this world of STEM? Um, is there like specific thing that you for sure want to do? Yeah, I think you might have touched on it a bit in my blur, but <laughs> yeah, so it's hard for me to say something is set in stone. As you said earlier, I'm sophomore right now, so I still have some time to go, but I'm very interested at the moment in pairing data science with sort of a global analysis. But I know, as I've talked to some researchers, they have told me that typically people have some sort of niche within the globe. So it's not just global analysis, but a certain continent that they're focused on. But I don't know that information right now. But I do know that I would love to analyze in and in issues that are happening across the globe. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily a think tank but that's just one of the groups I have been exploring. That's awesome. And we're down to our last question. If you could give one piece of advice to a younger student or your younger self uh, about exploring sort of your educational or your career path, what would it be and why? Wow, to my younger self. Yeah, that feels kind of daunting, but also kind of interesting. Yeah, um, dear Ashley. Mm -hmm, yeah. I mean, how old are we talking? It just younger than what I am right now. <laughs> A year ago, um, maybe like your high school or your elementary school self. Yeah, okay. I know it's not easy to do. Once again, I guess the most valuable things are never easy to do, but I would tell younger Ashley to be more open to learning new things at an earlier stage. Uh, I feel that now I'm more curious about lots of different ideas, but I wonder if I had started doing some of the thing these things sooner, might I have already figured out I wanna go on this path so just being open to various learnings, whether it's really reading the world news, just reading up with news in general, um, and just seeking, trying to seek discomfort at an earlier age. That is also a very difficult thing to do, which is why people um, easily want to stay in their comfortable bubble, but there is a time and a necessity for people to have to break out of those things. So yeah, that's what I would tell her. That's great. I absolutely agree. I think like being comfortable is nice, it's comfortable, but I think there's this sense of like- It's mm, comfortable for a reason, right? It's comfortable for a reason, definitely. The sign that you haven't, uh, like you haven't reached a certain place, right? There might be a certain line you cross and it's uncomfortable there, which means you're discovering more, right? About the world and about yourself. So yeah, exactly. I don't think it's, it's not bad, but it's just difficult. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think um, I definitely started pushing myself a lot more in college, but if I were to also do that at an earlier age, I think, it mm -hmm. could have made a world of a difference in terms of like figuring out like oh I want to do this or I'm interested in that so I, I absolutely agree with you yeah but I do want to mention that it's also good to reflect on where you have been so far there's there might be too harm in being too focused on oh what could have been right so there's part of good in just 
being peaceful at what you have achieved so far. But I think these reflections are pretty handy once in a while. Yeah, to just reflect on what you could do better going forward. Yes, yes, true. New Year's resolutions, good time. Mm -hmm. uh, since yeah. everybody is doing it. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ashley, so much for joining us in our Q&A. Um, you can learn more about Repicture at repicture.com and all of our social medias, including LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, thank you to our audience for joining us on this journey. And with that, this concludes our Q&A. All right, goodbye, everyone. Thank you.